Welcome grade 11, it's Mass Literacy, it is your time to shine because you're here with me, Megs, and Peter, Mr. Mass Literacy. How have you been? I've been very good, thank you. And welcome viewers to our show. Those of you who normally watch Mass Literacy would know that normally uh, we are on the 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock slot. Mm. And we've now changed it and so from now on we from the six o'clock to seven o'clock slot, which yeah. I think is a great time because it's normally by now that all you guys who play sport are back home and a lot of you are sitting down having dinner and now you can eat in front of the TV while you're learning a bit of maths lit as well. I think it's a super time. So welcome. Super duper time. <laughs> well, let me just tell you what's going on, what's happening here at Mindset. We've spoken about it before, but I have to remind you guys because, as you know, Samsung and Mindset, Samsung have sponsored Mindset with fantastic tablet and, of course, the application, the Learning Hub. So hopefully this doesn't fight with me now. No? Okay, there we go, perfect. As you can see, there's the Learn Extra Revision, Exam Revision, new content, free content, always downloadable, so you mindset should check. But it's only for Samsung premium smartphones and Samsung tablets. But fear not, mindset is because if you don't have one of these devices, then guess what? You can enter a competition, which is the Learn Extra Exam Revision Marathon Competition, and click Look, you download the race number or you download the note. Look at the race number at the bottom and voila. You could be entered into six or seven or eight other drawers to win one of these fantastic Samsung devices. So all you have to do is go onto our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Download the notes at mindset.co.za forward slash learn extra with an X, don't forget. And all you have to do is click on the link and wow, you could be a winner. Yesterday we had a draw. You never know. We need more people. We need more mindsetters getting interactive so that we can have another draw. So maybe it could be one of you mindsetters. You never know. But as you like to call yourselves pre-matriculants, that's the new name the grade 11s are giving themselves. So that's why we are now from 6 to 7. So. All right, so folk, not only is it for grade 11, this is entitled grade 11, and today we're going to be looking at finance. But on going through some of the questions that we're going to be going through tonight, I see no reason why some of these questions can't come up in a matric exam paper at the end of the year, or even in a difficult grade 10, a paper 2 type question. Okay? So with MathSlit, there's always that continuation from grade 10 into grade 11 and on to grade 12. And a lot of the syllabus is repeated. It just gets a little more difficult or we add something extra on every year. So grade 12s, if you are watching, please don't say, hey, this is supposed to be for grade 11, it's not for me. Of course it's for you. You watch as well because it might just help you at the end of the year. All right. Now, I've got a little confession to make, and this is our confession. <laughs> we have only three questions to three. go through tonight. Okay, <laughs> one, two, and three. three. Now, my producer reckons that it normally takes me like an hour and a half to do three questions. So he's saying we'll easily, easily have enough time to do all three of those questions. But I think I might run out of time. So what I'm going to ask you is this. Please, and even if you're in grade 12, why don't you just send through a question or two, okay? Preferably about finance, because this um, episode is on finance. But if there's something else that came up in your prelims and you're not too sure, please feel free to uh, write to Megan, and then she will tell me what that question is during yes. an air break, yes. and we can kind of go through it. All right. Megan, how do they ask you? Facebook.com forward slash learn extra. And extra is with an X, so if you're looking for it, it's with an X, just in case you're wondering. And then you'll be able to find me, and we can talk and interact, and then I can speak to Peter about it. So That's right. Learn extra, just like the T-shirt says, learn extra. There we go. Yeah, okay. You can see it better on his shirt. There we go. No. All right, folks. So what are we doing? Finance. Let's have a look. And in today's lesson, what we're going to be revising is personal and a little bit of business 
finance calculations. And we're going to start off with a very easy question and then uh, work our way up and make it more and more difficult. So here's the first question straightforward. A three kilogram pocket of onions costs 19 rand 99, okay? Three kilograms. The, we've got to calculate the costs of onions per kilogram. Now, gee whiz, that could even be a little grade 10 paper one question, okay? It might even be a grade 12 paper one question because we always give you very basic questions to start with. So I know that if I've got three kilograms and three kilograms is nine rand 99, well, what is one kilogram actually going to cost me? Well, in order to get that 3 to become 1, we divided it by 3, and we're going to do the exact same thing this side. We are also going to divide by 3. And I'm not going to do it. My calculator is going to do it for me. So we're going to bring up our calculator, and we're going to say, right, we have 9 rand 99, and we are going to divide that by 3, and we get an answer of now, there's our answer, 3 rand 33. So one kilogram is going to be 3 rand 33. Okay. Now, I have made a mistake in this question, okay, and I've actually done it deliberately. Now, I know you're sitting there saying, hey, we've got teachers at school, and when they make a mistake, they then say, hey, I did it deliberately. All right. But I've done it deliberately because of the following. When we are answering a question. There are four questions we need to ask ourselves. The first one, have I answered the correction, uh, the, the question <laughs> rather, yeah. okay? Have I used the correct units, right? Have I rounded correctly and does my answer make any sense? Now, I want you to look at this. I've told you that three kilograms of onions cost 19 rand 99. So now, I'm going to say, well, if three cost me 19 rand 99, how did one cost me only three rand 99? Wrong. Something, or three rand 33, <laughs> something is wrong. Because three rand 33 and three rand 33 and three rand 33 does not give me 19 rand 99. So where have I gone wrong? Can you see over here, I said three kilograms is the same as? 9 rand 99. It's not, hey? It's 19 rand 99. You see how easily I made a mistake? And you guys in grade 11, and you guys in grade 10, and especially you bo guys, okay? Boys. And when I say guys, I'm referring to boys and girls, girls okay? Yeah. You folk in grade 12, I tell you, it's absolutely so frustrating seeing how many careless mistakes matrix make at the end of the year in the exam paper. And I made one very big careless mistake right there by saying three kilograms is nine, uh, nine rand 99 instead of 19.99. So let's get rid of that answer straight away. Here we go. And we're now attempting the question again. So now with my calculator, I'm going to say, right, I now have, let's clear it, 19 rand 99. I'm going to divide that by 3, and now I get an answer. Now, let's have a look at that answer. And you should see it on your screen quite clearly on the calculator. We get an answer of 6,663. So 6,663333333. All right? So it just carries on. Whenever I get a weird, weird kind of answer like that, folk, I've got to ask myself, how do I round that answer, okay? Does the question tell me how many decimal places? Am I expected to know how many decimal places? Or am I going to do what the front cover of the exam paper tells me to do and automatically round it to two? Well, folk, what are we dealing with here? We're dealing with money. And so I've got an R standing for Rand, and my answer is 6 Rand. Now, how many cents in a Rand? There are only 100. So I can only have two decimal places. So if I look at this, my answer is going to be 6 Rand 
66 per kilogram. Got it? Easy, eh? Let's go on to the next question. Now, the next question, at first glance, when we read it, it looks so straightforward and it looks so easy. But it's actually not that easy. Because the question is not very clear in the sense that it's telling me three kilograms of onions cost 19 rand 99 okay and it's not telling me whether it includes tax or whether it it does not include the tax and now the question is saying what is the amount of vat collected on the pocket of onions okay so now if i've got a pocket of onions costing 19 rand 99 and i've got to add vat to that I've got to find 14%, okay? So I've got to add 14%. And gentlemen, normally what we do, when we're adding a percentage, I'm going to add 114 over 100. Why? Because what is 114 over 100? It's the same thing as 14%, okay? So we are adding the 100%, which is 19 Rand 99, plus the 14%. And I'm going to show you this so you know that I'm not talking a load of rubbish. So we've got 19 Rand 99. I'm going to multiply it by fraction button, 114 over 100. And I'm going to get an answer now of what have I done wrong here. I've done something very, very wrong. Okay. Oh, yeah. So it comes to 22 Rand 79. 22 Rand 79 cents. Oops, that went the wrong way. Okay. So that's the cost of my pocket of onions when I add the VAT to it. Now, there's another way of doing this. Another way of doing it is saying, well, we've got 19 Rand 99, and we're going to add 14% of 19 Rand 99. Okay? Which is going to give me 19 Rand 99 plus, now let's find the 14% of it. Okay? So we're going to say 14 over 100 because it's percent. Multiply it by 19 Rand 99, and we get an answer of 2 Rand 79.86, so it's 2 Rand 80. So this is plus 2 Rand 80. Now we're going to say, let's add the 19 Rand 99, 19 Rand 99, and we're going to add the 2 Rand 80, and what is my answer? My answer is 22 Rand 79. Peter, can I ask you a question? Yes. I was noticing in question one, have you worked out the price plus VAT or VAT? I think you still need to work out the no, VAT. No, no. All we've done is we are told for the first one it had nothing to do with VAT. Okay. Mm. All it's saying is we've got 19 Rand 99. Oh, no. I mean this, the B. Oh, the B. Yeah, no, what sorry. we are now saying is we are pretending at this stage okay. that the 19 Rand 99 does not include VAT. So we want to add the VAT to it. Okay. okay. So if we're adding VAT, we're finding 14% of 1999, which is 2 Rand 80, adding the 1999, and we land up with the 279. Okay. okay. But, folk, to me, the easiest way is this. If I want to find the price of something and then add the VAT to that, to me, it's easier multiplying by 114 over 100. And I'll tell you why. Because if I want to know what was the price if 1999 Rand, 19 Rand 99 rather, included the VAT? What was the price before the VAT was added? Then look what I do. Okay? I then say, let's get rid of that, I then say 19 Rand 99 
multiplied by, and look what's going to happen. I'm going to swap these around. Okay? 1999 times that equals, so now what we've got is 19 rand, 99, multiplied by 100 over 114 equals, and I get an answer of 17 rand 54. So it's 17 rand 54. So that would be the price before the VAT was added, if the final price was 19.99. So let's go through this again because it's important. And it comes up in matric as well, and it comes up quite often. If I am multiplying, if I'm wanting to add VAT, multiply it by 114 over 100. If I'm wanting to know what the price is before the VAT was added, so if I give you a price with the VAT, and I'll say, what was the price before the VAT was added? I'm still using 114 and 100, but I'm swapping them around. I'm multiplying now by 100 over 114, which gives me 17 rand 54. Then I, it's easy to work out what the VAT is. Why? Because we know it was 19 rand 99. Okay, let's get that calculator again. I know it was 19 rand 99, and we're going to subtract what it was before the VAT, and we can see then that the VAT was 2 rand 45. So that was the VAT. Okay, do you understand the two different questions, folks? If you don't, let us know, okay? But bottom line is, if I'm add, I've got a price and I want to add VAT, I multiply by 114 over 100. If I've got the final price with the VAT and I want to say, well, what was it before the VAT? Then I multiply it by 100 over 114. Time for an ad break. Time for an ad break, mindsetters. Don't go anywhere. Maybe just get a glass of water, but stay on this channel because we'll be right back after the break. Welcome back, prematriculants or grade 11s or grade 12s or grade 10s. You never know who's watching, but all mindsetters, regardless, we are here to help you, of course. So we're going over maths literacy today, like I said, and the time slot has changed, so you guys do know about that now. But just to give you some inspiration, because I know you've been revising the whole day, I hope. So I posted something on Facebook saying, success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. Am I not right? Say it again. Success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. Absolutely. And you know what, guys? This is what I always say to my boys as well. If you're a golfer, okay, <laughs> or a soccer player, or whatever you are, okay, the way you play in a tournament or the way you play in a game depends on how you practice that sport. So if I go off and I've got a soccer ball and I've got to practice my soccer, Okay? And all I'm going to do is kick the ball and then talk to my buddies and then kick the ball and talk to my buddies and kick the ball. <laughs> and I'm not really practicing my skills. When it comes to a game, guys, I can't expect to be phenomenal on that sports field in that game because I haven't practiced hard enough. And with your final exams, whether you're in grade 10, 11 or 12, the way or, or the uh, manner in which you are going to write that final exam depends on how you practice before the exam. Okay. So if you are fooling around in class, don't suddenly think everything's going to come right in an exam. For you matrix out there who have already finished school as such, and some of you I know have got another week and a half before you write your next exam, Okay, because your timetable has worked out like that. If you're sitting at home for a week saying, cool, this is the life. I can wake up at 11 o'clock and I can then have lunch and have an afternoon nap again at 2 o'clock. If you are going to fool around instead of learning, don't expect those final exams to suddenly be easy because no. they're not going to be. Believe the me. The way you practice is the way you're going to play. <laughs> 
at the end. Peter, the I just yeah. saw something come up now. Right. Mena, ooh, Mena Lisa. I hope I said it right. Oh, Mena Lisa. Yeah. Okay. Says, so what is, I think they're confused about B now. <laughs> I think I confused them. They say, what is the real question being asked okay. in B? Let's go back to that then. Like, right. I don't want to get too sidetracked on it. But no, it's no. basically this. It's a horrible question, okay? Very bad. And I just want to <laughs> set the record straight that initially in the question, this B part wasn't there. But our, one of our producers thought it would be a good little trick to put it in, okay? But he's not a maths lit teacher, so he's caused a lot of confusion by doing that. But the question is, what is the amount of that collected on the pocket of onions? In other words, the vat was already included in the price. The tax man's coming along and saying, Oi, they paid you 19 Rand 99 for those onions. Can I have my share of the vat, please? Okay? And so the real answer is 2 Rand 43. Perfect. So we had to actually calculate how much those onions would have cost before they added the vat so we knew what that vat amount was. Okay, I okay. hope that answered your question. Right, great. And thanks for the question. Now, let's move on, shall we? All right. right. Sparks Butchery is a popular butchery in Carcliffe. All right, now here's a question for you. Let's see how jacked up you are with your geography. If you know where Carcliffe is, I don't, don't you even. let... Um, what's your name again? Mel, Mel No. All right. Why don't you let Mel know <laughs> straight away if you think you know where Carcliffe is? I just want to know what province. But I think the rest of the question is going to give it away anyway. Okay. The butchery supplies meat to other butcheries in Howick and Peter Maritzburg. Sparks Butchery asks the following prices for some of their products. Here are their products. They've got lamb chops. The cost price per kilogram is 54 Rand. The selling price per kilogram is 85 Rand. Okay. So what do we mean by cost price and selling price? Well, here we've got a butchery. Okay, um, and it's called Sparks Butchery, and Sparks Butchery, for them to get the meat, is co uh, called our cost price. The selling price is what they sell the meat for. Now, obviously, folk, they want the cost price to be a lot less than what they're going to sell it for, otherwise they're not going to make a profit. And if you don't make a profit, what kind of business are you running anyway? So... They pay 54 Rand to get their lamb chops, but they sell them to the public for 85 Rand. Fillet steak. They pay 76 Rand per kilogram. What do they sell it to the public for? Well, we don't know. They've just put an A there. And I bet one of the questions are going to be, what is the value of A? I bet it. It's got to be there, all right? Because otherwise they would have told us. Now, spare ribs cost 43 Rand, right? And they sell it for 53 Rand 75 per kilogram. Please take note, the prices include 14% VAT. Okay? So you, we're not going to add VAT on afterwards. That price includes the VAT. So what's our first question? Calculate the percentage markup that Sparks Butchery will have on the spare ribs. Okay? Use the following formula. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're thinking now. You're sitting there thinking he's going to say what he says every single time we see this o on TV. Okay? He's going to tell us if you see a formula, use it. Guys, I can't stress that enough. Okay? The number of matrics at the end of a matric year where it says use the formula and a number of matrics that turn around and think, how do I solve this one? Um, let me uh, try this method or that. Use the formula. Okay, so here we go. Use the formula. The percentage markup is equal to the selling price. Now, what are we talking about? We're talking about spare ribs. Spare ribs. Our selling price is 53 rand and 75 cents. Our cost price is 43 rand. Now, divide all of that by my cost price, which again is 43 Rand. And then 
we multiply it by 100. So again, folk, at a time like this, we're not going to do any more work. Our calculator is going to do that work for us. So we're going to say, right, first things first, let's just write it up here. Fraction button, I have 53 Rand and 75 cents. I'm subtracting 43 Rand all over 43 Rand and then multiply that by 100. My final answer, 25%. So what's the markup price? The markup price is 25%. What do I mean by that? I mean they take the price of the spare ribs and they say it costs 43 Rand. Let's find 25% of that and add it on. And we're going to get a price then of 53 Rand and 75 cents. Right, our next question, B. Calculate how many kilograms of lamb chops, are we dealing with lamb chops, Sparks, uh, Sparks Butchery could buy for 2,000 Rand. Okay, so we've got 2,000 Rand, not we rather, Sparks Butchery has 2,000 Rand. So they've got the 2,000 Rand and they want to buy some lamb chops. Now, here we, let's look at the lamb chops. We got two prices here. Let me use a different color so you know what I'm talking about. We've got 54 Rand and we got 85 Rand. Now guys, remember Sparks Butchery is buying the meat so that they can then sell it. Are they going to buy it at the most expensive rate and sell it at a cheaper rate? Not at all. They are going to buy this meat at the cheaper rate and sell it for more money so they can make a profit. So what are they buying the lamb chops for? They're buying them for 54 Rand. So we're going to say, right, he's got 2,000 Rand. We're going to divide the 2,000 Rand by 54 Rand. And again, we're not going to do that. Our calculator is going to do that. So we've got 2,000 Rand divided by 54. So Spark Butchery goes off to someone and says, yes, 2,000 Rand. Hey, how many lamp shops are you going to give me for this? And they're going to quickly say, well, 2,000 Rand, we're selling it to you for 54. 2,000 divided by 54 equals, and we get 37,037, blah, 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 blah. Now, this question has not asked me how many decimal places to round off to. Okay? Hasn't asked me. So on the front cover of my exam paper, it would say, where necessary? And if you're not told otherwise, round your answer to two decimal places. So let's do that. 37,03 is going to be 37,04. So he's going to buy 37. Let's just double check. Uh, out comes the calculator. Yeah, it's going to be 04 because it's followed by 7. So 37, uh, ran, sorry, 37,04 kilograms of lamb chops. If the question had said, round your answer to the nearest kilogram, we would have then said, or give your answer in kilograms, we would have then said 37 kilograms. But it didn't tell us that, so we know we can buy 37,04 kilograms. In other words, 37 kilograms and 40 grams worth. Okay, next one. Determine the value of A. Now, I remember saying to you, I bet we're going to have to find the value of A, and that's what we're going to do. Determine the value of A, the selling price of fillet steak, if it has a markup of 30%. Okay, so fillet steak cost the butcher 76 rand. So we know we've got 76 rand. And the butcheries are saying, let's add 30%. In other words, let's find what is 30% of 76 rand. So we're going to times it by 30 over 100. And up comes our calculator, and we say, right, we got 76 rand. We're multiplying it by 30 over 100. Equals... And there's our answer, 22 Rand, 80 cents. So 22 Rand, 80 cents. 
That's the profit they're adding. That's not what they're selling it for. So what are they selling it for? Well, they're now selling it for the 76 Rand plus the profit of 22 Rand 80. So we say, right, we've got 22 Rand 80 plus, what was it? 76 Rand, huh? Plus 76 Rand. I must be getting old. Plus 76 Rand equals, and here's our answer, 98 Rand 80 cents. 98 Rand 80 cents per kilogram for some fillet steak. That's quite a good price, eh? Sure. I wouldn't mind buying fillet steak for that price because meat is so expensive nowadays, Yo, isn't it? It's bad, It actually. really, really is bad. When I was younger, for that amount of money, you could buy four whole sheep. <laughs> I mean, that's what? scary, eh? Okay, now for one kilogram, that's what it costs. Okay, Yo. so... A customer buys 1,2 kilograms of spare ribs and 0,5 kilograms of lamb chops. Calculate the total amount paid by the customer. So we know this guy is saying, right, 1,2 kilograms multiplied by the cost of spare ribs. How much did spare ribs cost us? Spare ribs will cost us 53 rand 75 times 53 rand 75 equals then we also wanting half a kilogram of lamb chops how much is lamb chops going to cost us it's going to cost us 85 rand so 85 rand for some lamb chops okay Again, that's quite a good price. The other day I saw lamb chops going for 129 rand a kilogram. That's just bizarre. Okay. Right, equals. Let's go. Out comes my calculator, and we are saying we want 1.2 kilograms times 53 rand 75 cents. Oops, let's just go back there. 75. Can you see how my calculator, I thought I pushed the button, hey, but it didn't come up. Check that when you do your calculators, because sometimes we don't push those buttons hard enough, like I just did. All right, so 1 comma 2 times 53 rand 75 equals, and my answer is 64 rand 5. Now, I'm going to do this deliberately. 64 rand comma 5. Is there such a thing as comma 5 of a rand? No, there's not. Because comma 5 of a rand means 50 cents. So I've got to put in that zero, please. And you know, your matric markers, they're quite strict about that, guys, so you've got to remember to do that. Then 0, 5 times 85, 0. Uh, 0.5 multiplied by 85 rand equals, and my answer, 42 rand 50. So I've got 42 rand 50 cents. Now we just add up the two together and we say, right, 42 Rand 50 plus 64 Rand 50 equals 107 Rand. So for all that meat, we only need to pay 107 Rand. And we've got some more questions for you after the ad break. Okay, cool, Peter. Guys, post your questions on Facebook. Are you stuck? Do you know where Carl Cliff, Carl Cliff is? Tell us, interact with us, facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you after the break. And we're back. Grade 11s, grade 10s, grade 12 mindsetters, whoever's watching, it doesn't matter. Revision is key. Believe me, when I was writing my exams, I wish I actually had done more revision. Believe me, revision is key to success. But I just need to remind you, if you don't know or <laughs> your questions aren't being answered, highly unlikely, but if they aren't, you know where you can go? It's mindset.co.za forward slash help desk. And I promise you, someone will be there to help one of you mindsetters because just in case we don't get to their questions because Peter has so much to do but he just loves talking for some reason and he forgets my name so I'm never going to live him he's never going to live that down I'm just saying ever. Megan I could never forget your name I did it deliberately oh yeah. okay all right folk welcome back 
Um, we've got about 18 minutes to go for the show, and so we've got so much to cover. Were there any questions that came in, by the way? Uh, no, there were just answers, actually. Um, okay, great. Melissa, yeah, right. the 37... Do, you, do we know where Carcliffe is? Has anyone answered that? No, but I know where it is. Where is it? Isn't it... Midlands, yeah, that's right. Natal. it's in Natal. Okay, Kozuli yeah. Natal. All yeah. right, great stuff. Now, calculate the profit on the sale of 50 kilograms of spare ribs. Now, folks, before we can calculate the profit of 50 kilograms, we need to know what is the profit of one kilogram. So, what was spare ribs going to cost us? Here we go. Spare ribs, the company buy it for 43 rand, and they're selling it for 53 rand 75. So 53 rand 75, and they sold it for, or they bought it for, how much did they buy it for? 43 rand. 43 rand. Okay? Equals. Now, we take out our calculator and we say, right, here we go. We have got, let's go to this side, 53 rand 75 minus 43 rand equals and my answer is 10 rand 75 so 10 rand 75 is the profit on one kilogram what is the profit on 50 well let's just multiply that answer by 50 so we've already got 10 rand 75 multiplying it now by 50 kilograms and it works out 537 rand 50 537 rand and 50 cents. That's the profit for the butchery if they sell 50 kilograms of spare ribs. Okay, now next question. Here we go. Yolanda wants to buy the home theater system seen in the advertisement below. So there it is, home theater system. Now, let's have a look what it's saying. Now, before I even look at the question, folk, I'm going to look at the resource. Okay, I'm going to look at that little picture and just try and analyze it, try and understand it, try and ask myself a few questions about it and answer myself as well. Because chances are, just by analyzing that diagram, just by analyzing that resource, you guys are going to help um, you answer the questions a lot easier. So, we know if we go into the shop, and we see this home theater system. Oh, it must be lovely to have a home theater system. It must be absolutely wonderful. I hope my wife's watching. Do you know why? <laughs> why? Because tomorrow's my birthday. I kid you. Oh, not. wow. So, I would really love a home theater system. But I think it's too late to go to the shop now anyway. Mm. They're closed, <laughs> aren't they? Okay, so that's not going to help. Right. So, cash price, 6,599 Rand and 99 cents. So, if I go into the shop, well, let me rephrase that. If my wife goes into the shop and she sees this home theatre system and she says, Oh, my husband really wants one of those and it's his birthday, so let me buy it for him. How much? The guy's going to say 6,599. And so, she's going to pull out her wallet, open it, she doesn't have a wallet, eh? What do you women have? Purse. purse. Yeah. Okay. Purse. So I pull out a purse, open it up, and say, oh gosh, there's no such money for that. Okay? <laughs> so what else could she do? Or she could buy it on higher purchase. Now, what does higher purchase mean, folks? It means that this, you are actually hiring the purchase. It's kind of weird, but listen to the name. Higher purchase. So you go into a shop and you say to them, I don't have the money to buy cash. Can I hire it from you for 24 months or for two years or three years or whatever? And I'm going to pay you monthly installments every month. And after those two years, the hiring comes to an end and it now becomes mine. Okay? That's what a higher purchase is all about. So on higher purchase, though, what the shop says is we firstly want a 10% deposit. Okay? Why? Because you're not just going to walk out of that with that machine. We might never see it again. We want to know you're serious. So we want at least 10% of the money. Then the balance will be paid over 24 months. Now, the total amount to be paid, excluding the deposit, is 7,000 
306 rand and 19 cents. And folk, I love this question because I've never seen one like it before. It's a really, really a phenomenal question. Now, she chooses to buy it on higher purchase, okay? So my wife says, okay, I don't have that kind of money. My husband's birthday, we will buy it for him, but we're doing it on higher purchase. First thing, calculate the deposit paid in rand. So she can't just walk up to the shop and buy this uh, sound system and take it and walk off. All right. What she's got to do is she's got to put down 10%. Okay. Megan, do you know what 10% of um, the amount is? So if it costs uh, 6,599 rand and 99 cents, do you know how we calculate the deposit? No, please enlighten me. Okay, so here we go. Megan, you should know this by now. Oh, really? Calculate the deposit in Rand. We're paying 10% deposit, and it's 10% of the total amount, which is 6,599 Rand 99 cents. Okay? And the great thing with that is your calculator now does the work for you. Okay, so out comes out my calculator, and I'm going to say, I want, where's my calculator? Come on, calculator, there we go. All right, I want 10%, so we're going to push fraction button, 10 over 100, multiplied by 6,599 rand and 99 cents. Now, watch this weird answer. Uh, Megan, that's going to come up now. Yeah. Okay, watch it carefully. <laughs> Equals, and we get this. 659 rand, comma, 999. Now, fuck, this is a real rounding question. Okay? And Megan, I bet you even got a little confused with this question. So confused. All right, because <laughs> to round that, what we've now got to do is say our answer is 659, comma, 999. But we can't have three decimal places, folk. We can only have two. So this nine changes that nine. But you can't get bigger than a nine. So that nine becomes a ten. So that becomes zero, and this becomes gets an extra one. Now that can't be because then we got ten. So that gets a zero, and that gets a one. And one and nine, we can't have ten in one column. So that becomes a zero, and that becomes a extra one, which is six. So when we round this off, it's 660 rand is the deposit. I love this question because it's a beautiful paper two question, folk, because not only are we checking, do you know how to calculate the percentage, but we're also saying, hey, do you know how to find or round off that Terrible, terrible amount of money. Okay, so there it is, 660 rand. Now the next question says this. Show through calculation that the total amount to be paid, excluding the deposit, is 7,306 rand, 19 cents, if the store charges simple interest at a rate of 11,5% per annum, on the balance after the deposit has been received. Okay, now folks, the one problem with this question, and you won't get this in your exam, okay? They will never give you a question like this unless they give you a formula. And they need to give you that simple interest formula. And I know that simple interest is equal to A is P1 plus R times N. Okay, so what is the amount of money that I'm going to be charged interest on? Now, folks, remember here, I bought this thing. It cost seven, uh, no, what did it cost? It cost 6,599 rand and 99 cents. Megan, are they going to charge me finance on 6,599 rand and 99 cents? Yes. Absolutely wrong, hey? They're not. <laughs> Why? Because my wife's already paid the deposit of 660 rand. 
And because you've paid the deposit, they can't charge you interest on that money. They can only charge you interest on the money that is outstanding. I was just so, joking. What is outstanding? Let's go through this. On my calculator, where is my calculator? Here she is, yeah? Okay. We are going to say we've got 6,599 Rand and 99 cents. When we take that deposit away, 660 Rand, what we do is this. We owe them 5,939 Rand and 99 cents. So that's all I'm going to pay the interest on. I'm not paying it on the full amount because I've already given them 660 Rand. So hey, you guys in the shop, don't charge me interest on what I've already given you. Only charge me interest on what I still owe. And I still owe 5,939 Rand, 99 cents. Okay, I'm never going to remember that. Will you remember the 99? And I'll remember the okay. 5939. Five, okay, so it's 59. Three nine, uh, five nine, three nine, comma, nine, ninety nine. nine. Okay, yeah. cool. I remembered the whole thing. One plus. Now, what is my rate of interest, guys? My interest is eleven comma five percent. How do I write that? Well, eleven comma five percent is the same thing as saying. And check now. I'm going to get my calculator to do it for me. Fraction button 11.5 over 100 equals, and my answer is 0, 0,115. So it's 0,115. So my interest is 0,115 multiplied by N. Now what does N stand for? N stands for the number of years, not the number of months, the number of years. But again, folk, in your question paper, when the examiner gives you the um, formula, they will tell you what each of those letters represent. And it would say N equals number of years. So how many years are we doing this for? Can you remember? We are paying it over 24 months. And 24 months, we know, is two years. So times two years. Okay, so now, by doing this, we can work out what um, our full payment's going to be for this. All right, so here we go. So, show through calculation, the total amount to be paid, excluding the deposit, is 7,306.19. So, in other words, guys, what I'm saying is if I've done this correctly, my answer should be 7,000. 306 Rand 19 cents. And this is always a teacher's nightmare, especially when you're on TV and you're live and you haven't done this thing and you're thinking, oh my word, I hope it works out. Otherwise, I've got to blame someone and I think today I'm going to blame Megan. Okay, so no. here we go. <laughs> out comes the calculator and I'm going to move my calculator this side so I can see all those figures and say, right, we've got 5,939 Rand and 99 cents. Open bracket, 1 plus 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.115 multiplied by 2 close brackets equals, and there's my answer, sure, and what a sigh of relief this is, 7306 comma 187, and the 187, the 7 is going to change that 8 to becoming a 9. And so, folk, if I look at this value, there's my answer right there. 7,306 Rand and 19 cents. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you. All right? Because, sure, it's quite a tough question. And we're going to take an ad break. In fact, only in three and a half minutes, so I'm going to carry on here. Okay. It's not so an ad break. the amount that your Linda must pay each month. <laughs> <laughs> now, guys, if she's paying the 7,306 Rand and 19 cents in total over those 24 months to work out what she owes in one month, we're just going to divide it by 24. Okay. Why? Because it's, we were told, 24 months. So away we go.
and out comes the calculator again. Let's move it this side. Our numbers keep moving, so I've got to keep moving the calculator. Sorry about that. So we got 7,306 Rand, 0.19. Divide that now by 24 months equals, and my answer is 304 Rand, 42. 304 Rand, and 42 cents. Okay. Right. We've got time for another one quickly. Yolanda budgets the amount of 300 Rand per month for the purchase of CDs and DVDs to play on her system. Calculate how much Yolanda will spend on the purchase of CDs and DVDs per year. So we're telling you, hey, every month Yolanda goes out and she spends 300 Rand on CDs and DVDs. Okay? So it's 300 Rand a month. How many months in a year? Oh, this is one of those city errors that matrix make every year. Guys, there are not 10 months in a year. There are 12. 12. So we multiply that by 12. And I know you know how to work out this answer, but let's use the calculator. Get into the habit of using it. 300 times 12, and we get 3,600. So she's spending 3,600 Rand a year on her CDs. Right, I think this is probably going to be my final question of the day, so let's go. She buys CDs at an average of 120 Rand a month, and DVDs at an average of 150 Rand a month. So, 120 Rand she spends on her CDs. Her DVD, she spends around about 150 Rand. That means she spends a total of 270 Rand a month. But remember we said she spends 300 a month. So what's she doing with the other amount of money? She says, and uses the rest to buy, to buy accessories. What kind of accessories would you buy? <laughs> Megan? With so, a necklace, a ring, an earring. No, man, to do with CDs and DVDs. Oh. Uh. Uh, cleaner? A cleaning there we go, thing, yeah. uh, an extra case because you've broken one, something yeah. like that. Okay, now, 270, she started with 300, minus 270 means she spends 30 Rand a month on those things. Guys, from me, it was great meeting you at 6 o'clock. See you next week again at 6 o'clock. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Mr. Peter. Well, thank you, Mindsetters. Whatever grades you were, you were great. You were fantastic. Hope you guys carry on with your revision. Don't forget, knowledge is power. Much love from me to you guys. Have a blessed evening and cheers. Good night.